Hey guys, Sean, Wesley the Verdames. I am a little bit excited today because I have cracked the code to opening uh, the Berna LE air chamber. And now it wasn't all that complicated. Google helped immensely. Um, so we are going to go through the air chamber, what I found, and I'm kind of going to touch on what how I'm going to reassemble my Berna LE in the hopes of, at the very minimum, maintaining that consistent 25 joule um, first shot, hopefully over at least a mag. Now, I'd love to see a little bit more power and there are some promising things that you will see in this video and I am excited to try, but, Again, full disclaimer, do not open your Berna um, unless you're like me or you're, it's out of warranty and you're a cheap SOB and you don't want to send it back or you don't have an option to send it back. Um, I was contacted by somebody in Europe and sending it back is not an option for him and I, and I feel bad <clears throat> that... Um, his malfunctioned on its second try and you know he's kind of up uh sheets creek without a paddle uh so hopefully a video like this may help somebody in that's in that situation but again don't ever take it apart not for the faint of heart okay so where we left off on my last video was uh the air chamber so and I did, I changed my camera view a little here because I want to be able to see what, what you guys are looking at here. Um, so there's an orifice in here and there's also this brass restrictor with a spring. There's a little hole in the side here that allows CO2 to travel up. Now here's what I can tell you about this valve, and hopefully I can show it on camera. In this position, so this valve has two positions, this position and this position. This position is your firing position. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna plug, so right now my, it's mostly open, I have the little uh, orifice in there. I'm just gonna plug the back here and I'm gonna blow in it. And you may or may not be able to detect this, but I'm gonna try and blow in this little hole here right in the front. And you can hear nothing. Hopefully you can hear nothing. Now, that tells me this valve is closed and this chamber is actually charging. Now, when I push that out, and I'll do the same thing. Hopefully you can hear that. Air is coming out the front. So this is the fired position. This is the charged position. For the sake of this, I'm reinstalling this orifice here because I don't really see a need to delete it. Um, there is a machined step inside here. I don't know if I'm trying to catch the right light here. So by step, I mean, so this is the orifice. It has an O-ring on it that seals, uh, but the brass pipe that installs in here also has a seal. Uh, this orifice can only go down so far and it bottoms out. So I'm just gonna push it all the way and I'll show you guys. That is right there is bottomed out. It cannot travel further. So I'm just gonna reinstall that as it was from factory. Let me grab that brass pipe here. So in the way this interlocks is Kamsa, like that. 
So this also has a sealing O-ring on it. And there's a dog hair in there. Nice. They interact together like this. And how I believe this is designed to function is, so this is the, for the purposes of what I'm doing here, I'm gonna call this the restrictor. So it has a tiny little hole right there. It's hard to see because the spring, let's see, there we go, right there. Which allows you to, in, to this brass tube, it travels up the back. And when it's inserted in here, it travels up and I'm not gonna push it all the way in, but we'll do a, an overlap here. So in its resting position, it's like this. Air travels, when you charge your CO2, it travels in through that little orifice or through that little hole in the front and then travels up into the back and actually pushes this spring, it pushes this whole valve in and closes the charge to the air chamber. My theory is, is we don't even want this. Uh, almost like a bypass in the M17, um, I'm not going to install this at all. Um, Worst case scenario, if the marker does not, if my launcher will not cycle properly or fire or pisses air out of the barrel, um, chances are I may, I will have to reinstall this and possibly drill this tiny little hole there larger to more, more match the outlet side here. So again, this is a, this valve is designed so when air gets to this side of it and the chamber is filled in this direction, that pressure is actually pushes this shut, cuts the CO2, you fire, and it will release, and the next charge of CO2 comes through. And, and this is why the first shot of the Berna is very strong, because the initial expansion of that gas compresses this spring very well, allowing a mucho gas into the chamber. But then after that, the charge is much lower and this spring, I'll tell you guys, is, is really strong. So each shot, each following follow-up shot uh, gradually falls until that CO2 kind of reaches its balance and that's where you see it kind of hold its consistency for, you know, a mag or two. So that is not going back in. That's half of the equation. The next was the valve assembly itself. Now, remember how I showed how it functions. Closed valve, so this is a charged valve ready to fire. Oh, and uh, I spoiled the surprise. Let's do that again. <laughs> that is a fired valve, so when that pop it, we'll call it, is in that extended position. This end is open and air is traveling out and down your barrel. The master combination was, I ran into this retaining ring and I didn't know what to do with it. I had an idea of what to do with it, but a quick Google search revealed, this is called a spiral locks retaining ring much like a snap ring. This would be considered an internal snap ring uh, as it opens, it opens to the inside to release as opposed to an external snap ring which would open out a side of a shaft and release. So we're gonna refer to this sort of, or compare it to an internal snap ring. Now how it functions it's really simple. There is no special tool to get this open. It's like a ring and a piston and an engine, essentially. Um, I used a fine flathead screwdriver and it's hard, really hard to detect here, guys. I'm gonna try and do my best. Right here, you see this notch? So what you do is you kind of get 
I'm trying to look through the camera. You get like this and you start prying and this ring starts to open up like this and you pry inwards and it literally uncoils. So once you get the first little bit out, I just kind of wound my finger on and it snapped out. <clears throat> and that's where I was hit with a surprise. Rings out. So now this air chamber should release and it will. This is the firing valve, I guess you could call it. Um, it functions very much like the SD, except the spring is internal. And if you look here on my SD, I had a disc very similar to this, but it was removable. This particular disc is machined into the shaft, so it's not removable. Yeah, you could grind it down. We're, we're definitely not going that far or doing anything like that. I don't see a need to remove that at this point. So fired valve, charged valve. And so how this works is when it's fired, see this O-ring on the end here? This is what a spool valve is. This is what kind of how a TIPX valve works. That valve pulls back out of this front space here and allows the air to escape. But when it's in its forward position, it blocks that forward hole. I don't see anything here that I really want to mess with, but did you catch it when I looked inside that chamber? This is what caught me off guard. See that brass ring in there? It's, it's, it's very much like a valve block. It's not, uh, it's not thick like a Umarex valve block, but that ring does decrease volume of this chamber. And guess what, guys? Boom. That little sucker pulls right out of there like nothing. And, and the only alignment that this, this, uh, brass ring is actually fitted with is this is the diffuser so by removing this ring i believe a we're going to allow more volume in there uh, but it is going to allow the gas so imagine this is inside the cylinder or inside the air chamber the air co2 has to travel through this these ports here without the brass it can go through the ports but it can also go around and by removing it, it does not affect the valve function whatsoever. So there it is fitted back in. I'm just going to keep my finger on the end here because when I push on this, obviously I don't want to shove it out. Voila, guys. My belief here is... A, this is gonna increase the consistency. This is gonna allow, instead of that first shot cracking off really hot and then the following consecutive shots, you know, diminishing results. But I don't know yet. I don't know any right now. And, and I'm by no means no exert, expert. And if you see something, you guys recognize something, drop a line. Because, you know, I love to know the proper terms for things. And I'm not sure anybody knows the proper terms for any of this stuff inside the Berna. Uh, but so A, consistency. B, power. Now, just for reference, you see that hole in the bottom? When this was installed... That hole is so there's kind of some notches inside the chamber here. And that hole is 
it's not perfectly perpendicular, not, not 90 degrees to this shaft. It's, it, it is in the direction of a shaft, but it's off like maybe an hour if we're referring to it in, in clock terms, like 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. I don't know the significance of that because ah, this, there are some parts of the burner I still don't quite understand. This mechanism here it has something to do with the hammer. The, you know, there's multiple things linked together here and, I, and I'm gonna show you briefly when I reassemble this, uh, how I'm going to do it. And hopefully it's in the correct order. So first things first, I'm just gonna install. So remember, I'm not installing this brass restrictor. We're gonna set that aside, but I do have to reinstall the rear plug. So this plug went in here. It is sealed with an O-ring. And I'm just gonna use some oil. You don't need much, I'd actually just scoop some kind of off the tip there. This thing's gonna have to pop in there like that. And then I'm gonna have to Tighten it down in there, and I don't know how tight this, it wasn't tight when I removed it, but I don't know if it's gonna stop when I hit a point, so I'm gonna do it gently. You can see it is, it is tightening in, and it did stop, so it stops flush. I'm not gonna crank on it because it did not, it took very little effort. And look how tiny, this is a 1 16th Allen key. So it's, it's pretty small guys. Next thing, we'll reinsert uh, the, we'll call it the spool valve, pop it. Uh, I'm gonna put some fresh lube on it. I don't think it's really necessary, but why not? Put a drop on there and I'm just gonna smear it all over everything. I don't know the significance of all these moving bits in here yet. So that goes in like that. We'll put some on the main kind of internal O-ring here. I think I'm, you want just a tad more. I hope this camera angle is working for you guys. It, it, it actually helps me see better what I'm showing. I found my last edit of for this video, I I was having to move, crop the, the, the footage and move it around because I would, ended up moving out of, out of, uh, out of the uh, focus area. So put that guy back in there. I'll get down. Okay, this is where I'm not sure. Okay, getting this spiral lock retaining ring out was, there was no problem at all. It literally was, I was overthinking. Now getting it back in, um, I'm thinking I don't want my fingers to be greasy, so I'm gonna really wipe them off. and wipe the ring off. And the way you're supposed to do it is, so you grab the bottom ring so if you're trying to install it like this, you want to get the bottom kind of separated and you get it stuffed into the, get it started and stuffed into like the, there's, there's a retaining, so there's like a groove around the inside in here. So bear with me here, guys. I don't know how this is going to work out for me. Sorry, I moved out of focus there. I'm trying to do is get it stuffed down in there. And I'm gonna tell you right now, just, just, just in this moment, it's gonna be more difficult than it was taking it out. 
I lost it. Where did my screwdriver go here? So I kind of just dug one edge down in there and what I'm trying to just keep pushing it along. And it is going. I'm using my fingernail. I'm not worrying about this top one. And it's kind of spiraling in. I'm kind of pulling it into the center and pressing down on it here. I've got a good chunk of it in there. Got the bottom half started here, so just gotta keep working. Oh, there we go, it's starting to drop in now. Let's see if I can get it close. So now it's just this last corner here, and I'm, so I'm using my finger now, and I'm kind of shoving it in. Boom, click. That's it, she's locked in. And just like that. This valve, the spool, is locked back into the chamber. Uh, I reinstalled my end cap. Just gonna grab my parts bin here. Now, this cap was on the back side of this. Now, it may not seem important, and personally, it doesn't really. Here's how I see this actually functions. It's retaining this plug. Uh, it's not retaining anything else here, but I feel like its purpose is to prevent this plug from possibly backing out. To note, while you're doing that, remember this hex, the safety selector, you do not want to remove it. If you remove it, there's gonna be a spring and a detent in there that is held in place with this Allen key. And if it does come out of place, if you look closely, crap, the lighting's all wrong. There's, there's two notches, there's one notch right there and there's another one kind of a little bit higher up here. Uh, and they lock into the detent so you'd have to slide it back in and put your detent and your spring in here and, and make sure this is oriented correctly. So as it stands, we now have a assembled, reassembled air valve. And now we're gonna reinstall it into the marker. Put that back on before I forget, because you know I'll forget. Um, the parts that you remove, the brass ring and the restrictor or valve pin, I don't know what you want to call it guys, uh, put them aside obviously. 
Do not want to lose anything. I've grabbed the parts that I'm going to need to, I'm just gonna set the air chamber aside over here, um, to reassemble this mechanism. Now you'll see it's kind of already sort of together because I did a couple of dry fits to make sure um, I had the right order. And those are the reasons for my still shots. Uh, first thing is I had to reinstall this uh, barrel actuator here. How it should be at rest is the flat on the front. And it should be oriented like this in the first notch. So I'm gonna pull this whole back piece apart here. So this cap comes off. This is kind of reverse engineering it. Uh, the spring can take out of there. Don't need that in there right now. That is your valve spring. And I'm gonna try and show you how, well, we don't need that cap on there either. How this would function and I'm actually going to remove this spring out of here as well and I have not I've not fully assembled this yet so I didn't originally want to remove this it, it, it's quite basic where it goes um, but I think removing it's gonna make it easier to show you guys and also demonstrate eh, sort of how this thing works and again this is my best guess based on, you know, some experience I have throughout the years. Um, remember, close, I'm not gonna, this is a valve spring. So normally this is seated like this. It has tension on this in, to keep this closed, your air chamber closed and ready to charge all the time. So we're gonna pretend like this spring is in there. I'll do that out of here. What I can't explain to you guys is I the the safety mechanism, how this thing works, and how it um, can charge on safety and not fire and until you move to safety. I'm not 100 percent sure on how that works. But here's the basic. So your marker is ready to charge right now. So you pull the trigger, pierce the CO2, air comes rushing in, there's a pipe here obviously, fills your air chamber, and the air chamber wants to expel the air automatically. This, remember that rear piston, pin, whatever you wanna call it, I showed extends out. That spring is pushing against it, keeping it shut. But here, mechanically, right here, this piston valve bumps up against it, bam! And that stops it from just automatically expelling its air. Where I get lost here is how the safety functions to switch to the fire mode. So now imagine that piston is bumped up against this. And for the sake of this, we'll call this the sear because it, it sort of is, it's not a traditional sear, but it's holding this valve from extending all the way. I'll try and hold it together here. Aha. So I sort of see what's going on. So you can see there I'm pulling and it's not actually, this sear is spring loaded. So it's locked in this position in it's resting state. This piece right here is locked. The spring keeps it in this position. So I'm pulling the trigger and it, the sear is not moving. So I'm assuming that's the charge position. Now, 
whatever the heck you call this thing here, when it's moved into, this is also spring-loaded. So I'll show that when I reassemble it. But in this position, when it's locked up like that, it, it's, I'm not gonna be able to show it while it's disassembled. But what, what, what you're missing here is right here, this hook at the bottom. I'm pulling right now and it's not actuating. This is like a cam and it's supposed to, ah. It's supposed to pull down on this. See what's going on there, guys? It allows this piston to go by it itself and that's what fires your marker now this cam in that position when it's spring loaded is going to actuate on this but because it's no there's no spring in it right now uh it's doing what it would probably do when you're in the safety position how it gets to that safety position i'm sorry guys I can't exactly say. So, we'll start from scratch here. Biggest thing to note here is this, whatever this thing is, <laughs> like, um, it has to fit. There's no other way around it. It, it kind of goes underneath and in. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna pull out the shaft. I'm gonna show you guys kind of how it goes together. So this is what I started with. Um, this sear comes off. This pin is actually removable too. Oh, and there it was pulled out a little bit. Uh, I have set it in place as we speak. It's actually quite easy. This um, torsion spring here, you just have to right there you see the tip of it. You just kind of stick this under, get it hooked, and then push your pin down and you can see once you get it set, you'll know it's set. See, I can do this. And this is the biggest difference with this LE. Uh, it, you couldn't do any of this stuff without shoot stuff shooting everywhere. So when you have it correct, you're gonna know it. Um, torsion spring fits here. There's kind of a reduced shank on this sear. Again, might be miscalling it. But once it's set in place, this is nearly a solid unit. If I shifted it a little bit, but I mean, look guys, you couldn't do that with the SD. Uh, if you did that, there'd be springs all over the room. You have this set. Oh, and you can't forget this. This is part, this is an important part of the safety here and I'm not uh, its orientation is, it goes down like this. Um, it's positioning isn't a hundred percent critical at this point. Um, when you put your marker together and you put your safety selector on, if it's in the wrong position, it, then what you have to do is remove it and, and rotate it up and reinstall this. Uh, I'm assuming it has to be in this upward position because so it fits in a little bit of a, a pocket here. So there's it goes like this and like this. I am going to install like this. I don't know if this is 100% correct yet. If it's wrong, then, well, then you have to install it like this. <laughs> See where I'm going, guys? Uh, 
I've done this about as much as anybody else. Install that piece. You drop your sear group. So it goes in, make sure it is flat down in the base here, in the clamshell. Uh, a couple of times when I was doing the dry fits, it was like cockeye like this. So you wanna make sure it is flat down in there. Next thing is, whatever this is called, the hook, catch whatever is down. And it has to go, fits around this sear. And you can see when I'm pushing it in, Goes like that. At this point, you, I'm not going to install this torsion spring. This torsion, oh, actually, okay, here. At this point, you can install, no, you cannot. Let's I tell you what, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to put it together, like how it should be in its order. And then we may have to back things out. Um, but this torsion spring, this L, the bend goes down like this. You see how that is? Fits in kind of like a Y right there. At this point, take this shaft and you can put it down through that cam like that. Don't know what this is called, but the way it goes is like this. You're gonna put this valve spring onto this guide shaft here. And then we will take our air chamber. Don't forget your backing plate. And what you have to do is, is get that spring in there and it's gonna wanna push. So you gotta kinda hold all this stuff together. And I'm looking here actually, okay. I'm gonna pull this out cause I can't, I won't be able to push this on with this torsion spring in there. So I pull out this shaft here and the torsion spring. And this hex that's on your selector is gonna have to interlock here with the hex that's on this little bit. It's gonna kind of all have to happen in one motion. In the meantime, whatever this is also has to fit around the end of your air chamber. So let's go for it. Looking to see if the air chamber is square. It appears to be square. I had to push this safety selector down and you can see it's it does it has protruded slightly out the back. So what I'm gonna try and do is let's get my selector on there. Or not. I think what I'm going to try and do is be 
nice to get it on there. Ah, there we go. It wasn't all the way down, guys. So now it's more centered in there. I just didn't hit it hard enough with my purse. And what I'm gonna do is put my selector on. I'm kind of balancing doing two things here. So I'm, I'm pinching and I'm holding and I forgot the screw for my selector. The reason I wanna put that selector on is because it's gonna retain this whole mechanism here without worrying about popping. It's these little tiny guys. It's a little Torx ones. T6. Didn't tighten it down too much. All right. So by installing that selector on the back, it's kind of holding this in place. Now you can see there's a bunch of parts that are loose. We're not done putting it all back together here. Uh, but you could never do this on the SD. Uh, if you just, uh, it was really, you had to like hold it and try and get the clamshell together. Otherwise everything would be shooting everywhere. Uh, currently there's only one spring under tension under here. And that is this, uh, the torsion spring that is kind of pinched down inside our sear here. Now here's where I'm a bit of a crossroads. Um, we need to get this brass pipe back in here. And I'm thinking before I try and uh, push this spring in and load this other um, torsion spring and insert my shaft, it might be easier to manipulate this into place. Now, well, nothing's more is under tension. Remember, only this one, ten, only this one uh, torsion spring is under tension right now and, and it's not doing a whole lot. It's it's really just sitting there. So I had tightened this down, trigger group down. So I'm gonna loosen it off just a little so it has a little bit of wiggle room. I'm even just remove it completely. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove it completely. It'll sit on its own. Now behind this there, this black piece of the trigger has a pin on it that interlocks with this flat bar right behind here. So if you lift this, you need to make sure that it re-engages in that same bit. So I'm just gonna throw a little lube onto these O-rings. What you want to do is, I think it's better to manipulate the trigger mech into position. So I try and I'm gonna turn it a little bit here. I'll lift this ever so slightly. Nope, I'm gonna push that in first. You know what? This is how I'm gonna do it. This is gonna show you kind of what's going on here too. So there is, sorry, the pin is on the flat bar. So that pin has to interlock with that right there. But at the same time, you have to be trying to keep this in this position. So plug it in here. 
You can always put that in after. See, I'm being gentle here, guys. You don't want to be all prying all over this thing. So I sort of kind of got it, sort of kind of <laughs> dropped in there. Again, it, to be mindful of these little O-rings here. You don't want to be torquing on them too much. And now the trigger mech is kind of in its slot here. And while it's in that space, you can see there. Oh, I moved it too close in. You can see that bar with the pin on it, and we want to get this other actuating bar over it. While keeping in mind, it has to be oriented just like that. So you can do that by kind of looking down the side. You can kind of move this trigger bar. And you may have to fiddle the trigger just a little bit. And there you go. So now that bar is interlocked with the black part of the trigger. And the orientation of this actuator arm is flats are perpendicular. Good time now, put that trigger group screw back in. You don't want everything moving after this point. Keeping that brass, brass, this brass pipe sealed and sturdy is, I think, a very uh, important goal. Like I said, brass is soft, it's easy to distort, and that could be a very uh, problematic portion if you were to tweak it in such a manner that um, you could not reset it properly. All right, so at this point we have only two more springs to set. This hammer spring, return spring, I don't know, and this torsion spring. The torsion spring has to you look closely right. Yeah, that's not very good. I need some with a shiny end on it. Yeah, this one's shiny. In the edge of your air chamber, right there, beside the selector, is a hole. That is where this L angled piece interlock. So I'll try and drop it in there. Like that. You can see it's dropped into this hole. Uh, the other piece is going to wrap, kind of make a Y shape on this other cam. And what we have to do is insert this pin in while keeping it sort of all together. And and see, I'm just gonna, I'm holding this cam here, I'm gonna push up on this pin. And this shaft 
needs to go all the way through to the other side here. So you can see it's got this raised ring on it. It's not currently all the way seated down. It can take a little bit of fiddling because you are, you are in the tension on this spring. Sometimes just take an Allen key, kind of apply some lateral pressure. Or you can even try and look. Aha, uh -huh. my safety was in the way. I don't know if you guys caught that. See that? So I had to go to the fire position to push that through. And are you guys seeing this? See, huh? This is the LE, although I haven't test fired this yet, looks way more complicated. Hey, you could never do this with the SD. No way, no how. Okay. As far as I know, this is mostly together. This is the last spring to install. And how I'm thinking I'm going to do this. is like this guys. Once you put this cap on, it's got a nice Berna embossed logo on it. Um, you can see there's a slot in the bottom corner. The slot interlocks like this. See that? Once this is together like this, you can literally put your thumb on this and as long as you don't pull up too much, um, you can you can manipulate this quite easily, but there's one more piece we gotta put on. And that is this cantilever arm. From my disassembly video, there's a notch in this. Don't know how important it is. See on this side here, this side is completely flat. There's a notch here. The notch goes in notch faces in and it interlocks with this. See that little tab at the top there? There are two pins on this. That one is what fits on this pretty end cap. This one is what fits on the arm. And the way it goes is this arm this actuating piece fits in this slot, divot, whatever. But uh, the knob on the end also has to fit inside the blue here. You can see these two pieces, see how it fits inside there? Once you have that, Notch in, put it together. And last but not least, well, not last but not least, you put this cap on. To my understanding, once this cap is on, there's no going anywhere for any of this stuff. It literally secures all the bits and bobs. The SD did not have this. Literally the SD, I had like needle nose pliers and I was like holding a spring and then gah, and trying to get it all together. Uh, yeah, you can't do that with the SD. Not a bad, not a bad marker. Just completely different design, okay. The last two pieces to go on. This block off plate 
don't know how important it is, but it does go like that. I'm going to reinstall it. It seems like maybe it acts as a, you know, like a, a guide, a wear bar, what have you. I don't know. Put it back in. This needs to get back in there. How it works is it goes up into your blue and it needs to be compressed up into this right there. So there's a stop on either side. So you need to compress that spring up without lifting too hard on this whole mechanism. I'm just gonna gently lift up on this. So you can see I have it started, but it's not done. It needs to go all the way up into that notch. And that is what I'm going to do. For the sake, because I haven't gotten this far, I've done, you know, I did some dry fits. I don't know what's gonna happen when I press on this. Um, it is fastened, you know, by my, oops. Moving too much there. My selector, safety selector on the back here. This cam, need, this cantilever arm needs to stay in that position, needs to be in that little slot that I demonstrated there because on this side of the clamshell, there's a pin there. So that pin needs to go down through the center of that as it's in this rearward position. So let's go, oh, you know what? <laughs> Before we get too far here, well, let's try it anyways. You need to reinstall your uh, CO2 cap here and your barrel. But let's see, will it stay together once I load this up and put this spring together? Huh, you look at that, guys. That is exactly how it should be. Now, at this point, I definitely wouldn't be shaking it all around like the hokey pokey. Turn yourself around. You're doing pretty good at this point. It's staying intact. Kind of wish I had a merciless lethal cap, uh, CO2 cap for this right now. I really do like uh the way dk's running his with the with the exposed uh cap and the exposed barrel i think it's cool as well so um may have to do that in the future i don't want to open my sd at the same time because like i said that's my carry um so here is your end cap so make sure you put that in there your barrel I'm not gonna modify the spring in any way at this point. Uh, the trigger pull as demonstrated by LAFF is eh, maybe a pound lighter than his modified spring. So uh, I don't really see any need to do it. And, and at this point, I don't wanna change any springs in my marker. Um, this is strictly remove some parts and see what we get because uh, if we get something good, well, that makes it easy for everyone. Nobody wants to add springs or cut springs if they don't have to. I mean, I'll gladly do that. Um, but again, at some point, somebody's gonna try this. I know it, guys. Okay, barrel, important. See this notch here and the crossbar here? These two pins interlock. 
the shiny one. That pin, one pin on one side needs to go in that slot right there and obviously in the other side. Saying that, this notch has to be facing down your magwell. So notch, down. That allows the ball to kind of shimmy shimmy ya, shimmy ya, shimmy ya, right into your barrel. Okay, when you reinsert this, this kind of stopper has to be forward. And no, I'm incorrect. We're gonna have to double check the footage. Please hold. Video replay shows. The bumper goes on the back side like that. And the spring just floats in front like that. So we're ready to put the other half of the clamshell together, but it's important to see this here you need to get this pin on the other half through that and into the other side successfully. Uh, in the meantime, you also have to make sure this shaft and this uh, safety selector pin goes through as well. And it may need a little persuasion. And by persuasion, I mean, stick an Allen key down the hole and kind of just work it around and get it in there. So. Everything is laid out in how it should be. I'm going to carefully start it. Oh, and look at that. I was actually able to easily just start that pin and get it aligned. Oh, look at that. Duh. This pin, see, I'm learning to. <laughs> it's actually removal oh my gosh so there we go Make sure everything's firmly pushed back down i forgot my mag release why didn't you guys tell me mm. spring goes in goes just like that. So it goes on first. Just knock it into alignment here from the inside. I feel like I'm missing something here, guys. Like something isn't just quite where it's supposed to be. Aha, uh -huh. you catch that? Uh, this just wasn't locked in. The air chamber was, there's, it's hard to see, but there's a little lip there. It just wasn't quite pushed flush. So in reverse order again, we can put this pin in. Put this cam down. notch to the inside don't forget your block off plate 
This is gonna work. This is gonna work, guys. And then you gotta put your cap on here. Now, it should fit rather well together. Okay, so this back went together much better this time. You just gotta work your way around, making sure this barrel stays in its little slot there. I can see my barrel's out of alignment. Just, I just missed those notches. Should be a fairly straightforward fix here. There we go. Ha! Huh. Just need a little persuasion. What happens? The spring got caught up here, pinched in the clamshell. Oops, make sure. Your indicator, you see that? What almost happened? I probably would have broke that thing off. <laughs> see the indicator there? I was about to pull the trigger and it's up. It's gotta be down. gear it's in the wrong position and I thought it wasn't gonna matter I thought maybe I'd be able to rotate it what's happened right now it's in safe and it won't go to fire that cam gear needs to be the other way so quick rewind Okay, pardon me, I wasn't able to show, but what had happened here is there is a little, I don't know what do you call it, it shaped kind of like a teardrop and it wasn't oriented correctly. Um, it's, it's tough to explain. Uh, I actually had to <laughs> disassemble and reassemble two more times to get it correctly oriented. So what I did was uh, originally that teardrop was kind of, I don't know, it's hard to, in this position with the marker, with the launcher, I put it straight down. And as far as I could tell, it is functioning how I want it to function. Um, in doing so, I forgot, oh, this always happens when you forget something, to put this backing plate back on. So, um, I mentioned, I think it was more or less to kind of be as a retainer to stop that little uh, plug from backing out if that is the case. Otherwise, we are going to find out because, well, I need to air this and see if it's actually gonna do what I hope it's gonna do. So. 
I got it snapped back together. Got my mag release in, all my bits and bobs are in the barrel and it's functioning fine. You have to make sure this spring is in this area here. There's a, there's a kind of little notch here. If it's behind, it's gonna bind. Take my longest screw out of all of them and put it through. There's a nut on this side. And we'll tighten her up. Not super tight, but I think at this point, so now this is sort of holding together. Um, and I will just grab the rest of the screws here. The two shortest ones went in the front. The longest went in this rear. The second longest went down here in the grip. So I'll put that one in while it's handy. shorter screws but there was just slightly longer than shorter screws if that makes sense uh, and that was your trigger group what you want to be sure is that you don't cross thread these buggers so I'm being careful here that one just doesn't seem right It's fine. I just need a little more. Finagling here. A little tight. It might've just been because the group shifted when I was um, assembling this. Shortest in the front. Not gonna put on the boost yet. Obviously that seems like a bit wasteful in case I have to tear this down again. I'm also not going to put the top cap on. Uh, and there's one more screw that goes in here. Where did I put it? Right there. This is a medium length. Oh, and our, our safety. So we are in fire right now. So make sure this one is also matching, obviously. And these were little tiny guys. These are tiny screws, guys. No Ugga Duggas. Um, I know previously some people with SDs were experiencing these screws backing out. It, it did appear like there's a little dab of Loctite on there. At this point, I'm not gonna do that. Appears to be functioning as it should. Hey guys, you are gonna have to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, videos aren't easy. And shout out to all the other Less Lethal channels. And, and, and there are a few of them and we are growing. Um, 
it, it, it's not easy making these videos sometimes, guys. Uh, you could be embarrassed. You could, I don't know, you could screw up. You can swear. You can drop stuff. You can kick stuff. And all in the name of trying to make an educational video that other people want to watch. So subscribe. And you will get to see what all of this works out for Maybe it's just a blast of air, it doesn't fire. Maybe, just maybe, we have a Christmas miracle. So, I'm out.